Hello, and welcome to the Healing Dreams Project, exploring projective dream work for your health and wholeness with hosts Billy Ortiz and Dr. Roy Spitz. I am the producer, Viviana, and today we're going to explore one of my dream snippets. I had this dream on March 21st of this year, 2023. I am eating something. I realize it has plastic in it. And I swallow at the same time. I try to gag and pull it out of my throat, but I can't retrieve it. I'm worried I'm going to die. End of dream. Dream note. I woke up on the plane on my way to Fiji, extremely dehydrated. So I did dream this dream on my way to Fiji. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was surprised that I actually had a dream while on the plane. You know, you don't really sleep soundly on planes. But. So I, I think it would be wonderful to um, share why this dreamer goes all over the world and is on a plane and is on the way to Fiji and falls asleep and has this dream. So to tell us uh, the adventurous life of Viviana. I am a flutist and this is my magic wand hmm. and it takes me all over the planet. And I, I, Play. I'm about to go to Chile now. I'm playing as a soloist with the orchestra in Santiago. And when I was going to Ch uh, to Fiji, I was embarking on a cruise ship where I am a guest entertainer, and I performed for all the my captive audience on cruise lines. I also teach at universities. I teach master classes, and I was doing that. I think recently in Michigan. Uh, so it's I'm a concert flutist, is what I am. And that has taken me to 135 countries. Wow. Yeah. And so I think it's really important that we as listeners and as dreamers understand the somewhat of the waking life uh, context uh, in which the dreams may get invited. Uh, and um, so that's that's part of your story. And people people can go to your website and, you know, we can talk about that later, but they can see samples of you forming and, and, uh, and know that across the world, there are these healing notes from Viviana that are uh, touching all of our souls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very nice. So in the dream, I, I know that I'm eating something. Do I have any memory of a taste or texture other than the plastic? Like, is there, is it like sweet or salty or chewy or flaky or any, any memories of that? I don't remember what it tasted like. What I, I just remember at some point that it was hard or, you know, not, not soft and chewy or going down easily. It was hard and scrapey. And I thought that it was going to, you know, take my throat out or something. Yeah. It's like eating glass or something. So when I realized that it has pla like plastic, like plastic wrap or like plastic, like hard, no hard plastic. Hard plastic. Okay. Like hard, a, like a piece of a pen, like a casing of a pen or, or a piece mm. of a, like a, you know, like we always have plastic things that break off and you go, what the hell does this go to? <laughs> we said we have a drawer of those somewhere in our house. Right? Yeah, I know my drawer is full of plastic. <laughs> we have it like, I always go, this goes to something. It looks really important, but I never know what, but yeah. So, so it's like, how do I, what's my feeling when I realize that there's plastic and I feel this. Well, I realize it's plastic at the moment that I'm swallowing. So oh, it, it just feels, oh no, I just swallowed this plastic and it's gonna kill me right <laughs> so i try to you know get it out um i i i gag 
and I pull it out of my throat, but I can't retrieve it. So then I think I'm going to, I'm going to die. And then right after that, I wake up in the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, you know, so (laughs) this is the funny thing about dreams. Sometimes things flip on their head in the dream world. And one of the things we've spoken about often and as we work dreams and on this podcast and with the dreams that i work is that when we die in a dream or we talk about dying in a dream it's Mm -hmm. always a good sign in the sense that if i die in the dream then that means that i've transformed to it's extreme psycho spiritual growth and change something in me has changed so much it's like the old me has died so the new me can be born so when I say, oh, my God, I could have died, and then I wake up, it would be a very different dream if I actually did die, uh, mm-hmm. which is hard to understand in the dream world because, you know, of course, if the guy's chasing me with a gun, I want to get away from the gun. Um, if I'm choking, I want to stop choking in the dream, so I live. So there's, um, I'm wondering if it were my dream, if this was some part of me, since it's such a short kind of focused dream nothing else happens except the swallowing of the pl- plastic piece which if i get worried that i'm going to die what would have happened what would be different if i had allowed myself to die in the dream is my question what would be different if i had allowed myself to die in the dream right and what what would i what would i ask the dream this is not a question that i would have to answer literally but i would ask myself as the dreamer what part of me is reaching out to transform so radically it's as though the old me has died so the new me can be born and where which is and just where does that show up in my life well that is everywhere in my life (laughs) Okay. And constantly as a, as a Scorpio rising, um, that's just my middle name. It's in there. I I was born into it as you are a Scorpio son. So you understand. Oh, every Um, day. Every day. all about, (laughs) yeah, exactly. So in, in fact, in the frogs, frogs are also for me, symbols of transformation and yes, every day every day huge uh just i mean the last couple years i mean it's just it's just as we were speaking earlier layers upon layers and upon layers it's almost like uh i'm here living in constant transformation so right absolutely yeah so that and i'm not afraid of it right but i am worried in the dream when i say in the dream i'm worried yeah yeah in real life i don't think i would be worried I'd embrace it. Well, if well, I mean, not my actual death, but my my transformational death. I mean, there's a piece. Mm. There's uh, Robert Johnson used to have a, a line where people would say, Robert A. Johnson, a Jungian analyst, wrote some really wonderful books. He, she, we, transformation, inner work, all this kind of really great books. And he used to have a line that he would say in lectures often, and somebody would inevitably hold up their hand and say, "But Dr. Johnson, um, my you say that I should follow the messages of my dreams, but my dreams keep telling me that I should kill myself." And he's he would say something like, "Well, by all means, kill yourself." And then he'd take like a drink of water, and people, go, ah, and he says, <laughs> "But don't harm the body." It's an important piece. By all means, kill yourself. Just don't harm the body. So in our dreams, we're gonna have we're gonna have these scenarios where something's threatening threatening me as the dreamer, like to the point where I, I feel like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. And then of course, I'm gonna kick in that self preservation piece. I'm like, no, 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 I can't. I, I gotta pull this thing out of my throat so I don't choke and I don't die. However. Was that what the dream was trying to get across? Like there was a, a, a process, a stage that I'm ready to move forward in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's always a, a nice reminder for me. Yeah. Mm. 
So I, I'm aware in my dream, um, I could have choked on food. I could have choked, I, I, you know, I, another, some kind of accident. It's plastic. And that, in my dream, I don't like that. <laughs> if I'm going to, you know, choose a way to die, I want, you know, to be, you know, natural-ish. Here we have this plastic. And I thought of microplastics, you know, kind of- I thought the, that too, actually. The, yeah, the larger ecological uh, destruction and wounding that our planet is undergoing. And I'm aware of how important uh, ocean is to the dreamer yeah. uh, as, she, as she's swimming in the ocean. Even now, as we're looking at her- uh, yeah. And, and so it's like, you know, I'm flying to Fiji to me, one of the most, you know, gorgeous idyllic places on earth, uh, all places on earth can be beautiful and idyllic too, but Fiji has this, uh, amazing, um, uh, image. And, and so I'm choking on plastic. And again, it's like, I am, experiencing the the macro pain of coming death as also also in the micro pain of my own uh potential choking I... wow yeah that that really brings up something that actually happened so yes as i was flying this is 11 hours over the pacific ocean until you get to fiji mm -hmm. from i think it was la that i had to take the flight it just really what what royce just said reminded me of when i was snorkeling in bali and and there i see a sanitary napkin Ooh. it's just not what you want to see in beautiful and and fiji is is like swimming in a in an aquarium and so and yes seeing the plastics i also thought of microplastics when i woke up and how much we're just harming our environment and, and ultimately harming ourselves uh, ourselves it's, it's 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 in an emergency sort of state mm -hmm. right i think and almost anywhere i go my personal goal is always to find the silence because I just love and relish and honor and cherish silence. And it's so hard to find. And I also love um, nature in its pr most pristine sense without, mm. without any interference or any buildings or any, anything. And that also is just so increasingly hard to find. Mm. Yeah. So what makes me think, you know, all of this resonates for me, too, because I think of the same thing about the microplastics and, and how you know we're ingesting all of this every day, whether we know it or not. And it's like, you know, I forget the percentage that they've come up with lately, but we can't avoid it. It's gotten to the point where it's just become such an environmental hazard. It's an everything, everything we eat, everything we drink, everything we breathe. Yeah, we're we're always taking in some kind of chemical from from some type of um, plas plastic or whatever. Um, so I'm I'm wondering a couple of things here. Um, in my dream, it's in, it's emphasizing the throat very much. Um, I I feel like I'm going to choke, I, and I'm I'm afraid that it, um, what is the word? I'm worried I'm going to die. And I try to pull out, I, I gag, and I try to pull out the plastic piece. So I would think as a metaphor, it has something to do with what I wish to say that's stuck, mm. that hasn't been able to come out, that I haven't expressed freely, which is stuck in my throat. And, and it's needing to be expelled exp and for my health and wholeness, for my, for my um, survival, quite simply. So I would ask myself as a dreamer, what is that that I wish to say 
that I haven't said yet or which I haven't expressed yet. Mm -hmm. I, I want to build on that because, uh, again, what I select in my dream to choke on is plastic. And so for, you know, one of my slangs is to sometimes say about something that I don't feel like is very authentic is to say, well, that's plastic. Mm -hmm. And, and so, uh, what, what am I needing to say that perhaps an inauthentic part of me mm -hmm. is suppressing, uh, and, and I'm, doing my best to pull that out so I can, in my dream, say what I need to say, be who I need to be. Uh, and, and, and I cannot get the plastic out of my, out of my system. Mm. And I can imagine the gagging, the frustration mm. of trying to get that out. I've had other dreams for myself, not ever about, as far as I know, not about plastic, but about something else I'm trying to get out, um, like gum mm. that's, you know, wadded up. And I, it, no matter what I do, it, it's, it's stuck in there. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the dream, is there any feeling of not being able to breathe when that when I'm gagging on this? Or do I still have a sense I can breathe through my nose and that's everything's okay there? Or any any feeling of oxygen being deprived? I don't remember and I didn't write any down, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I do love that. That feeling, I, I guess it, it it does have the energy of wanting to speak or feeling frustrated that I'm not able to perhaps breathe, yeah, perhaps die as a result. Mm -hmm. And well, anyway, yeah, yeah, and yeah, plastic, not uh, something man-made, something. I'm just so earthy and I, mm -hmm. I don't like right. how or what I'm living. And I, I just feel out of my element. And I, mm -hmm. my big dream is just to live in a hut somewhere, <laughs> oh, but mm -hmm. not very practical, but that's my dream for some reason. Mm -hmm. Well, again, this reinforces my, my need to either die, uh, you know, and, and celebrate that transformation in my dream and or to speak my truth. And one of my pains in, in my dream about the world is it, how do I speak my truth when there is so much artificialness mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, everywhere. And everywhere. It, yeah, everywhere. I mean, I, I get so discouraged. I am discouraged about our political struggles, our uh, social struggles, and and the the um, helplessness that I feel. I cannot. I can't say anything that is really going to make a difference. That's what it feels like, mm -hmm. and and I feel like I'm dying in that way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> well, in my dream, it, it I have to remind myself, though, that the dream doesn't come to tell me I have this problem and, oh, sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. The, the dream is always coming with a new understanding, a new, a new revelation, a new way of another perspective, something that's going to expand my consciousness to allow me to understand that there is a solution to this whatever the issue, and it's always commenting on many things at the same time, multi-layered, multi, multi-dimensional. So yeah, parts of my personal life, parts of my life, my social life, how, how do I help the ecology of the world? How do I help the ecology of, you know, the health of my body? All these different things are spoken about in this little snippet of a dream um, at the same time. So 
I have to first say the dream's not going to come to tell me just what I already know. It's coming to tell me something that I need to know that expands my consciousness beyond what I have so far that my, my um, conventional ways of doing things have, have to expand and change in order for this growth to happen. I keep going back to the fact that it would be a very different dream if I actually had died in the dream. And what would that, what would happen there? What, you know, and, and I keep thinking about breathing too. So it's related to speaking, but also taking in air and nourishment. And because, you know, when, when sometimes when we drink, you know, when we take a drink and we go, ah, and we kind of choke on nothing, like, you know, we just swallow wrong. One of the things that somebody taught me a long time ago, they said, put your hands on top of your head and open up your chest and breathe through your nose and close your mouth. And you can realize that there are other ways to take air in. But what happens is immediately when we have that choking reaction from taking the, you know, a drink of water and it goes down the wrong pipe. Our first reaction is to that part of that throat chakra uh, closes down and, and tightens up and there's this fear response, but to realize there's other ways to breathe and there's other ways for things to come in, uh, that understanding of opening up the chest and breathing through the nose calms down that reaction that happens in the throat of closing down. So in my dream, it's related to breathing as well as the need to speak. Yes. I like that a lot. As a performing flutist, mm. I'm very much into breathing, and the I recognize the importance of intentional breathing, and and the different forms of breathing, and how when we're scared, our breathing gets shorter, and mm. when we're relaxed, our breathing is longer, and. And I also do a lot of breath work as well, which as a way of transformation, as as uh, processing issues and things. Mm. And I, I very much see the value of, of that. I, I think breath is, it's so natural, yet we often overlook its power. Yes, I agree with that very much. And as, so, I'm sorry. As Rumi said, the sound of the flute mm. is the breath of God. <laughs> wow, wow. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The, uh, you're reminding me in my book mm -hmm. and also in other aspects in ancient Hebrew, the uh, breath of God is ruach, mm -hmm. the breath. The, the fierce and gentle wind of God breathes mm -hmm. into us and gives us life. Mm -hmm. It is what gives us life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more important than food. <laughs> I was going to say, we will die quicker from no breath than we will from <laughs> no food or water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so in my dream i'm wondering because this is a snippet and it it came in a way and it, it came in a very brief manner so i'm curious what i'm gathering now that i've shared the snippet uh that you know what am i gagging for in in the spiritual and existential realm um what purpose do I have? And am I, th this is my projection, am I avoiding my death uh, of transformation, not the physical waking life death? Am I avoiding my death in a dream? And, uh, or, 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 or what? Does a dreamer have a reflection? I, it feels more like a reminder of, of my trans, of a, of transformation as, as a general, mm -hmm. as a general word. I'm not, 
in waking life, I'm not f afraid of death. In fact, I'm sometimes a little too intrepid in my world. Mm -hmm. Some might say I'm crazy or insane, especially my travels. And I'm, but I, um, I always feel like I'm protected. I may or may not be. Probably I'm not. Mm -hmm. But transformation is very important, and I, I'm constantly shedding my skin. I feel, mm. and I, I also embrace it, and I learn from each layer that comes off. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So do I ever get get the piece of plastic out and look at it? Or how does the dream end? The dream just ends with it stuck in my throat or? Stuck in the throat. And then I wake up and I'm severely dehydrated. So it's like those feeling, that feeling of having knives in the throat because you're just oh. so, which only happens mm -hmm. on the plane because it is so dehydrating. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Was, I thought it was interesting that I woke up feeling like I had the plastic in my throat. Right. Mm -hmm. And- so I was able to get something to drink fast enough to alleviate that feeling pretty quickly or. Yeah. I always carry a lot of water with me. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, it seems as though it, it's yeah, very, it's very much related to some survival issue. If it were me there, cause it, that's mm -hmm. such a um, critical part of the body, how quickly I could die from that part that, you know, from my windpipe being blocked mm -hmm. or, you know, somebody putting, you know, you can, some people can like <laughs> hit you right there in the, the pillow. Adam's, Adam's mm -hmm. apple and just mm -hmm. break that pretty quickly. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. fat, it's a quick mm -hmm. way to die. So there's something about survival, if it were me, um, mm -hmm. so much more about not only just the idea of right in the waking world, I am dehydrated. Part of it is the my body sending off alarm bells in the dream world, like <laughs> it's time to get some liquid. But there, but there's another piece about all those things connected about the breathing and the speaking and the and the swallowing and the nourishment and the air and all of that together. It seems to be a very critical place. How quickly I could lose my life from that part of my body being mm. injured or blocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that felt very, I like that, the survival element. Mm -hmm. mm. I felt poignant <laughs> and important, yeah. Right. I, I like the part uh, that Billy alluded to a second ago that in the linear world, in the waking life world, and we fall asleep and our throat is very dry, that the instincts uh, kick in to say, hey, I need some liquid. I need something for my throat and I needing to breathe. And, and so it would be easy to just notice that that's all the dream is is i'm mm -hmm. sleeping on a plane i get really thirsty i'm really dehydrated and so you know we wake up and we get some water and then it's like okay we're no no big deal to look at this dream with symbolism with metaphor with uh the, the challenge to uh die in the dream the challenge to live the challenge to for me to be authentic uh, with my breath uh, mm. when it's it's plastic that's killing me. Uh, and I, I heard the dreamers say, sometimes I just want to be in a hut, you know, in a forest or on a desert all alone. And, and, and so that may mean for me that I'm, the, the dream is trying to provide a worst case scenario for me to wonder what can that the worst case scenario is if I don't get that, you know, some version of 
of nurturing isolation. If I don't get that, I ain't going to be, I'm not going to be alive in the authentic sense. Mm -hmm. And so the dream feels like it's, it's challenging me to find a way to honor the authentic aspects of what I look for in a desert or in a forest or on an island. What am I needing to help uh, and to nourish that part of me that yearns for authenticity. Hmm. Hmm. Good. Bingo. I know. <laughs> Bingo. What a, what a loving dream. The dream loves us. It loves, yeah. loves the dreamer. It's like the dreams that we have where we're looking for the bathroom and then we wake up and we do have to pee, but that's not the only meaning of the dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like the body's yeah. giving us the clue. Like, yes, my body needs, needs to eliminate right now, but there's so much more to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, absolutely. And these little snippets uh, are gifts. Mm, they are. Mm -hmm. Little pearls. Well, thank you very much. I love it. Anything else you want to explore with your dream or? I, I, I love it. I love the, the depth and the different uh, ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't get the nurturing isolation, mm. it's the dreams challenging me to honor the authentic aspects of what I'm looking for. I need to nourish that part of me that needs to honor. Yeah. Well, it just makes me, well, luckily I do. It makes me want to go to these beautiful places and I do end up going, but it's like, I want to be there all the time, not just part of the time. Right, 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 right. I know there's a deep right, my challenge. You know, you know what, a, what a tension, what, tension I have in wanting to be in all of these 135 countries and be alone and isolated and be there forever. You know, wh <laughs> what a what a beautiful, awful dilemma this is. I want to be alone, but I also want to have an audience. It's kind of a paradox. Oh, that's weird. Isn't that weird? But I think it's because I'm so I always have an audience that then I just need to be really alone. Sure. Mm -hmm. Understandable completely. Yeah. Everyone says, Oh, but you're so friendly and social. So I would think that I like people. I mean, I do, but I really love being alone. I <laughs> completely understand. You don't have to sell me on that. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a choice. I'd rather be alone. <laughs> Just mm. it it's how I'm built. It's what happens. It's how I'm, how, mm. I'm it's how my makeup is. Mm. Wow. Well, I certainly imagined it for myself, and I keep thinking about how everything comes in through that that passageway into the body. I mean, liquid and food and air, everything. Words. Word. Every all everything comes in and out through expression. The part of the such a critical part of the body yeah very good nourishment and expression yeah it is very important yeah and i love zooming out and bringing it into like what the collective might a collective take on it sure i know love it very nice well um Let's wrap it up. And uh, Dr. Royce Fitz, tell us about your new book that's coming out. Thank you. Yes. The Geography of the Soul, Dreams, Reality, and the Journey of a Lifetime. Mm -hmm. So this book will be released in late summer, August, early September, perhaps. And um, it is some version of a spiritual memoir in this book, uh, my invitation uh, to the reader is to uh, walk a, a path of authenticity and to 
um, look at how we all can take a journey into our deeper selves and also do that as we are on the earth. Uh, the deep and intimate dreamy conversations that we have between earth and us and earth and sky and sky and mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So that circular process of, of, uh, of uh, moving towards open heartedness and vulnerability and authenticity. And I do it on a hike in England. So there. Beautiful. I highly recommend it. And RoyceFitz.com. Spiritual counseling and dream work. And would invite you to reach out to me. A free 30-minute session to look at what spiritual counseling and dream work can hold. And uh, in some ways, it's very similar to what we do here on our podcast. To look at the deeper values of who we are. How, to, how the dreams come to help us honor these values and uh, to live out our life with uh, realness and to be uh, in a process of healing others and healing ourselves, healing the earth, the universe, and our own selves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about uh, Billy Ortiz, wakeuptoyourdreams.com. Yes, that's my website. And there you will find uh, the calendar that shows the dates of um, the groups that I teach and and facilitate throughout the month. Mm -hmm. It's an evening group and there's also an afternoon group. Um, it's an open enrollment so people can come anytime they want. Sign up for one or two or lots. <laughs> and then I also do private sessions and I also help people train to become dream workers themselves. And I like to host, I've got, gotten back into the habit of hosting um, in-person dream retreats twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. Everything's up on the website, wakeuptoyourdreams.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, and I and am... Viviana, the flutist of the universe. <laughs> Viviana.org is my website, V-I-V-I-A-N-A.org backslash magic for my tarot, astrology, sound healing, and dreams. Mm. Mm. Very nice. And if you have, dear listener, a dream to share with us, we encourage you to call our dream dreamer hotline. Operators are standing by. <laughs> the number is 720-573-9195. Again, 720-573-9195. We'd love to dive into your dreams. So call it in. Right. Also, we are, if you have any, any comments, like, please go to the, to the comment section and YouTube and the comment section for all the streaming podcasts, whatever streaming podcast format you might use and leave a, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you and hear your feedback. That, that helps us to know which direction to go. Absolutely. We are Healing Dreams Project Podcast. Exploring the language of stories, symbols, metaphors, and archetypes. Until next time, happy dreaming. <laughs>